Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Scott. I'm the writer, producer, and director of Skin on Skin, the rise and fall of the world's largest furrier. And today I'm here with the brilliant composer of the original score for the film, Vince Loria, a Las Vegas musician who, as I said, um, did a magnificent job with the score for this film, sets the tone for the whole thing. It's magnificent, Vince. For, first of all, tell everybody a little bit about you and, and uh, uh, how long you've been doing this. Who doesn't love a rags to riches story? But a rags to riches to collapse story? There were two Evans Furs. The one that climbed to the top of the highest peak, amazing story, and the one that tumbled from that peak decades later. But that's not the tragedy. The tragedy is what happened in between. They live the American dream, and they let a lot of people come in and live it with them. And it was a wonderful story until it wasn't. Coming from a, a generation that was so driven and willing to work 18 hours a day to be successful, there aren't that many people like that anymore. They, they created something out of whole cloth. And he helped kings and queens around the world with their fur coats. That was the era, uh, I would say, the golden era of department stores and specialty stores. Genetics loads the gun. But it's the environment that pulls the trigger. Non-existent parenting, and so they didn't learn how to cope with stresses. And I just look at the damage that my father created and the things that he has said. But it certainly caused a, a significant rift in the family and families and, and you know, a number of us didn't communicate with each other for a long time. You marry into the family, you marry into the business because that is your life. Clearly, there were problems. I've been doing it probably about 30 years. I, uh, I have a Clio Award I got when I was much younger and got to work with a lot of celebrities growing up in Los Angeles, California. Just a lot of different people, actors, all sorts of things like that. But I progressively, I started as a musician that I slowly wanted to be an engineer because I could never get the engineers to do my stuff, the, my music the right way. So I wanted to be able to have control like I do with the Pro Tools HD, HD Studio, which I have now. Okay. So, yeah. So, um, and, and you teach as well? Yeah, and I teach. I used to teach at Dick Grove School of Music, which is like the West Coast equivalent of Berkeley. And, uh, yeah, I taught and done seminars and all over the place. And tell me, uh, when you were younger, you were a little bit of a metalhead. Yeah, I like metal more. And I, well, I originally like blues. I really like old blues like Robert Johnson. I love the feel of that stuff. Then I progressed and I got into jazz more. And, uh, you know, I won actually a Palmdale High Desert Festival jazz competition when I was in high school. And I thought that was, that's the only thing I cared about because I was like, dude, I was pretty much stoned all throughout high school. I mean, it was just pretty much that. I remember once my coach says, Lorian, go out for a catch. And I was completely ripped on everything was purple. <laughs> you probably cut this part out. But anyway, I don't know. So anyway, that that was the end of that. I don't really, I don't do that anymore. But it, it served me at that time because it got me through high school, which brings me to writing music. And I've always been, always wanted to do more classical orchestral type of arrangements because I like having the different instruments.
So I started basically as a guitarist and I got pretty proficient on guitar. And, but the thing is, I really look at myself as a composer that plays guitar. Interesting. I don't look at myself as a guitarist, really. And, and so when I came to see you about this, uh, um, you had hundreds, we went through hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of songs that were orchestral. So you've been compiling that all this time and, and just waiting for the right moment to get yeah. yeah, for from starting about 13 years ago, about 15 years ago, I went through Russell Garcia's book on composing. And actually, I had a, we talked a little bit. He's dead now, but he's a great composer. He was more in the 60s, 70s. I just follow his work because I like old movies. And anyway, I would correspond with him and things like that. And I almost got to meet him. He said, I'll be out near Vegas. He lived in New Zealand on a boat with his wife. That was a wild story. But his book, uh, the composing book that he has, he has two. I went through the whole thing. And I taught myself from just going through it. I did every exercise. And I it's on my blog. My blog was rated one of the top 50 in the world with Cambridge, uh, Yale, Harvard. So my blog has, a, it's still out there, but yeah, it got rated pretty high. So without getting too technical, yes. and then we'll get into the film. Right. So what's your teaching style? How do you, you know, what's what's different about the way you teach from, wow. from what uh, the average person well, finds when you have a guitar person teacher? gets like a degree and they, they get like a book and they go, okay, we're going to go through this book. <laughs> and what I do is I custom make lessons for what people want, what they can do and what they need. I can look at someone's hands. I don't even have to look at them. I can just listen and go, up, oh, up, oh, pick is weak. I can tell whatever is the weak thing in their technique. Then I give them specific things for that to improve it. It takes a lot of work, right? Like these people come to you. Everybody wants to be Eddie Van Halen, but yeah, right. But it takes a lot to be Eddie takes, Van Halen. It takes a lot. Yeah, I mean, even Eddie Van Halen didn't sound the same as he got older. Right. I mean, but his stuff is phenomenal. But yeah, you have to, you have to, you know, it's like anything, you have to get better and better. And the thing with me is I'm always, I get bored kind of easily a little bit, you know, that's always been a trait. So I always want to get better. So I'm always writing something new, something different, jazz, classical, box style. I love Claude De Debussy. His stuff's great. I've actually learned his string quartet on guitar. Yeah. And then I would analyze it and then I morph it, which means I could do something similar, close to it, farther, farther, farther. That's one of my favorite things. So uh, when I came to you for the film, tell me what stirred you about this. Oh, well, what's it's interesting? It wasn't the money. <laughs> no, it wasn't the money. It wasn't the money. But I like the idea because I tend to write, I like, of course, minor keys. I like I like major keys too. But I tend to write depressing stuff. I don't know if depre depressing stuff is the right term, but I tend to write melancholy. Stuff. melancholy. Yeah, melancholy. Yeah. I like stuff that's kind of creepy yeah. and haunting. Versus something like, you know, hey, let the dog get on the side. You know, like the country, modern countries, like someone's like, I got my dog and I got my sister. Right. You know, got in the truck and I don't mean mister, you know. So whatever. so did some when I came and told you the story yes. that you saw I have all these these, these songs in files. Yes. And initially, so then we, we got talking and then I go, oh, now I get it. And it's like the thing about your movie, your history with this, Scott, is very layered. It's not just like, oh, Susie made money. Susie went to school. It's like, oh, Susie, I don't know. Susie's like all over the place or whatever, like had a lobotomy and went, <laughs> went to one at McDonald's or something. I don't know. It's so twisted, but I like the depth of stuff, like where people think, oh, I'm going to make all this money. I'm going to be happy, which sometimes people are. But when you look at like Kurt Cobain and just anybody who makes it, oh, I'm so happy. I'll kill myself. Right. That's like a weird thing to me. But I liked it, so yes, I got more of the ideas. I understood what you were actually talking about. I found more pieces that, and then I wrote pieces, of course, for the, the film too, that kind of had that, it's kind of like, I think of things like a dream kind of funeral circus, mm -hmm. 
You know, like things are like a funeral, but with a circus in the background. Well, it's interesting, as time went on with the film, the initial batch of songs that, that we used, some of them were replaced because, as you said, you started figuring out what the whole thing was about and then even went to, to writing things for it and then even going back and remastering some of the and re And that was a good thing, too. Even the ones I'd already given you, Scott, I had to remaster them and they sound way better. Brings out the fidelity. There's different frequencies that get buried sometimes just by... And by fine tuning it with the mixing or the mastering more appropriately, it brings out these subtle parts that make it more interesting. And I like to write stuff that has more like telling a story. Like most songs go, it's called an AB formula or ABC with a bridge. But I like things that actually can go A, B, C, D, E. And then what you do is you heart, you hearken back to the original melody but you do it with a different set of chords, which is a challenge because it's fairly easy to write a melody that kind of goes back and forth, but it's harder to write something that progresses, goes into something else, then it progresses again, but it still has what I call a thread of continuity. You still hear, oh, wow, that's kind of hearkening back to the original thing, but it's different. One of my favorite expressions with students is similar, but different. Because when you're first learning, it's like, wow, it's gray or white, it's black or red. But the truth is, a lot of music that's great, a guy named Arnold Bax is one of my favorite guys, too. His stuff is like this. It's like similar but different. And use of certain instruments or harps. And plus, I do an interesting thing with the guitar. I do voicings, which means arrangement of notes that sounds like a harp or have a harp-like sound. So I imitate the harp, harpsichord, and piano, but I'll do it in sections on the guitar which is not really, been, I mean, it's been done, but not exactly the way I'm doing it. That's why the soundtrack, when you hear it, it doesn't sound like, oh, it sounds like everybody else's. It really doesn't. Yeah. And so a lot of it's the way I'm voicing the chords and then interweaving the melody in it. No, the, everything you do magnificently sets the mood for what we're, what we're doing in the film. So how did, it, how did it feel? How did it look for you once you saw the music set to the video? Oh, no, it's great. I'm stoked. I want to do, I mean, I hope they do a full-length movie because, I mean, it's great as is. Scott, what you did is actually very impressive. It looks totally pro, and that kit you sent me looks totally professional. But it would be great if they could get, like, Brad Pitt or, I don't well, know. That's what we're working well, awesome. awesome. on is, you know, we've got, we're going to have this docuseries of uh, three documentaries. Right. And then there's that. So there's three, oh, and then there's a company in a uh, uh, podcast that we're doing. Oh, okay. And then uh, there's also a screenplay for that series you're talking about. So maybe we'll get there. Who knows? That'd be great. But I'm play. excited where it is right now. I think the music really fits the scene. Perfectly. You would run stuff, but it's like, it's almost like I was thinking about the other day. It's like you're excited something's going to happen, but you know it's going to go to heck. You know what I mean? It's like, wow, this is so exciting, but it's like you almost have dread while you're excited. Right. You know, and that's part of um, why it worked so well for me fitting it to the video was, the, the, you know, the story's a roller coaster. Oh, yeah, and most of these coaster. songs that you wrote are a roller coaster. A roller coaster. You know, you're yeah. taking it, whether whether it's two minutes or four <laughs> minutes or, or, or uh, even Forbidden Future, which is 10 yeah, minutes, you're taking one. us really through this series of emotions that... Uh, Drive the whole thing. So let's take a look at a couple of the songs. Okay, so cool. one of the ones I really love is um, the one uh, from the section about my grandmother Thelma, and well, that was called Red Jet to May. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Let's just put that on for a minute. Kind of has. Well, I, I thought at the time not necessarily, but I kind of a French feel for this. Like the other thing is, is that a lot of times when I write music, I get a certain picture in my mind. So I'll think of like the circumstances of what happened to your family, but then I'll just kind of go to sleep. And some of the best things I've written have been why actually I'll get an idea in my sleep 
And then I wake up and I write it on the ukulele. I, originally, these were written on the ukulele, believe it or not. Really? And then I flush them out with the guitar and the piano. Okay, we may have to have you pull that out. Yeah, I'll yeah, yeah, I mean, just example. show you. Just, it's so, I, I can show you. Yeah. yeah. That's supposed to be like a accordion. So what are you trying to achieve here? What's kind of like a summer day. So like right there. Okay. So it starts, everything's happy and the children are running and everyone has a, the, in perpetuity enough money for their kids, 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 kids. But then it gets a little mischiefy. Like they hit a bump in the road. That gets a little sick right in there. So you can almost feel like something bad is going to happen. And well, and that's, you know, when it is hot. I mean, and it fits the mood. Yeah. That's yeah. what I like. Here. One of my favorite things from the film are yeah. the um, more ethnic sounding ones, like this. Uh, a lot of young men would pull up Ross Tango's. Oh, yeah, yeah, I love, that song. I love Ross Tango. That song is just one of my favorite And that comes things. towards the end of the film. I think that's yeah. actually used for uh, the previews for the next uh, version, next uh, episode of the film. Somebody reason. wanting to come to America to be successful. That's what I felt writing this. Like, oh, I'm going to go to America. I'm going to be a success, which your family did. But, but yeah, this is kind of Greek. I like Greek stuff. It was... what, do, what, do, what do you have snapping in there? Okay, those are like uh, what are those little snap those things. Little things uh... so now, on this one, uh, I didn't play the percussion. Most of these things I play everything. Guy named Mike Borderman, okay. who's a drummer I use sometimes, and he played the Staffy Staffs and did some drum parts that are very creative too. Oh, what are you doing? Are you doing that together or are you doing them separately? No, no, no. We do it. It's funny because it sounds like we're together, but he's in Colorado. I'm here, and they were written it like months apart. But we do it because we're good at We're able to make it sound sure, like Sure, sure. I don't know if you want me to keep playing yeah. it. And see how it builds? Yep. Again, that expectation of greatness, of hope. Oh, wow, the American dream, you know. Right, right, right about here where we hit this point where but you can tell that something's going to happen. Right. And that's what's beautiful about this plucking right here. You like song. it? Yeah, I love it's it. Kind of and that sound I'm making, that's like a, a, I think I put an organ through a distortion box. So, and then you go, this is supposed to be like, we made it. We've got the $100 billion. It's just kind of like being there. Yeah, right. But then at the end of this, it it's gets like, a little oh, sad. It's, it's like, like uh, sighted, you know? It's like the thing at the amusement park that takes you up, and I just boom, and down to the... And then this one kind of comes down, because I didn't keep it elevated. That's kind of like thinking to yourself, like, wow, is this going to really stay? I thought I'd loved her. I don't know. It's like, and then this is back to the top, but with another sound added. Yeah. But I'm always my good yeah. all these layers. And LA, that's what I know and all notice in all the songs that you're constantly adding more tones and layers as the thing goes on. Yeah, I try to keep it work because I get bored, a little bit of ADD myself. So I like it to to still have that continuity, but you do want to keep things, moving forward. Keep moving forward. So it's not just loop right, just right. the same thing over and over. Which most modern music, you know, does kind of that's why it bores me right. a lot. Yeah. Okay, how about uh, my other favorite one, which is the only real rock song on the soundtrack, is Angry Man. Yeah, this so song. a little bit about that, because this, this song, I, you know, I just jammed to this myself all day long. <laughs>
I mean, sometimes, you know, in life you get mad or you get something that bothers you. I think I wrote angry, mad. Okay. So th this is going to be real personal, but mm -hmm. you're a musician. There's a lot of like, I don't want to know if the haters is the right word, but people will like, and you have a certain level of ability They'll get mad. They'll just say stupid stuff. Well, they always want to just knock you they down. They want to knock you yeah. down. You know, and I don't want to get out of negative thing, but you'll say like, wow, this thing, this film, and they'll go, they'll always find some, they'll find the the gray cloud and the, the rainbow. But anyway, I think somebody had said something to me. This It was written a few years ago, and I just got mad kind of. So this kind of slide plane, I took a, a nice thing like the blues, which is kind of, melodic and I just kind of was angry with it just a little bit that's why I call it angry man see and this starts again kind of kind of like oh I've heard that but then the way I play the slide is not like other guys I'll make it I'll use chromatic semitones in a different way to create like a harmonic sequence drums I, started, I played drums I was originally a drummer when I was a kid so drums like this change. What did you play in your metal band? Oh, in the metal band, I was guitar. Oh, okay. Yeah. I played with my hair. <laughs> I had, my hair was cool. Yeah, but it, what I love about this is as the song goes on, it gets more and more disturbing. Yes, it does get right. You know, Scott, because I get part of that's boredom and part of that's with, you know, when you're angry, the anger feeds on itself. Right. But it's not so much I'm yelling at someone, I just take it out on the, I just, kind of use the guitar to get it out. Clapton talks about that too, where he was playing. If I had a bad day, I'd play this and he does the thing, but I did that with this song. Go, uh, go grab your ukulele and let's okay. just show us how. All right, I, I'll I, do I, it. I, I'll I, definitely show you. Okay, so, 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 so you know, well, I'm like the ukulele, so I'll, I'll wake up in the middle of the night. So my best stuff is around 3 a.m. 3, you know, and then I'll, and then the other thing is I watch a lot of UFO things, so I'll go to sleep watching these just creeping UFO, you know, just UFO shows and weird. So when I think of those things, I get yeah, ideas. So you so we fall asleep to that, and then we'll, so, and then you'll, so, and then you'll, and then you'll, 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 you'll in your sleep, in your dream, you'll, yeah, you'll okay. come, something will come to you, and then you just wake up and start playing. And start, I start playing. So to you, you, what do you do to not forget it, though, once you start playing? Well, I you either up. play it repeatedly or I literally come out and I write it out. Okay. Because I found that if I sometimes don't write it out, I'll, I'll kind of forget it, Scott, or I'll only remember parts. But like, just, just, just give us a little bit of what, was a thing yeah, what it looks right. like. You just woke up and we'll write it out. Let me see. So you get like... This is a song on Just like that. Now, if the idea works on a little cheap ukulele, that means when you flush it out with guitar and piano, it's going to sound amazing. I can show you all pieces in music that were originally started on the ukulele. Wow. Is that wild? So that that's what we call a seed or a motif. Okay. Right, you know, idea. See that one, I remember because I love that. And then going to the C. So if you can make it work, if you can make it work simply like this, then you know you're on, you're onto something. Exactly. Because there's an idea of what's going. Use on. all these sense of different things, or I use samples actually more than sense. And you know, you can have these great sounds, but if you don't have something that has an original thing that catches you that has that little thread of continuity you heard how the chords were going into a little world they'll start to grow so yeah this is the uke is great why don't we put up one more and okay. uh so many layers to it it's so rich and um there's, there's so much going on and this it comes at a point in the film where right. you know we're getting to the uh, crescendo of um 
you know, everybody finding out how horrible somebody in my family is. Oh my and this just goes beautifully with it. I mean, it's a scary thing that yeah. occurs in this. Now, this, like, Forbidden Future, sometimes, like, when I think of, like, a piece, again, it's pretty much what I was thinking of, like, just everybody kind of gets a general anxiety of, like, what's going to be occurring in the future. But this one, this one, uh, put a lot of work on this, this, this piece, because it, it, it's really representing a lot of angst and kind of a depression, because I went through like kind of a depressed period uh, many years ago when I moved here off, actually coming out of a divorce. You're kind of in a weird space, or at least I was. Sometimes people are just partying, but I was in a weird space. So instead of like trying to drown it out with alcohol, so I just write it out. Right. So this is, some of the stuff you hear is actually what I was feeling which is kind of weird, like how they could take like a shot of your thoughts. One of the things that amazes me uh, and, and really I, I found unique when all, all the times we met on this was, um, you know, we went through hundreds and hundreds of songs, songs, but you listen to every song and you know, you know, the moment that yes. you wrote it, yeah. well, as you're discussing here, what was going on in I your know, life? Feeling the feeling I was having at that time. Right. And what was, what was going on in your yeah. life? It's because I can remember it. Go, oh, that's why I wrote this thing. Or, but you might not have listened to something for five years. Oh, why right, was it? Ten years. So, right, yeah. And still, it comes when you hear it. I try to, yes, just be able to go. It takes me back to it. That's why the better stuff usually has something that like, kind of hangs with you, too. Uh, now that you've done this and we're going to do two more of these, yeah, it's gonna um, be awesome. how, how do you, going into those, do, how do you think you'll, you might approach Scoring this a little differently. Pretty much, they're still, is it going to be sad, right? Yeah, but it's, this is not a happy story. <laughs> it's not a happy story, Scott. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty friggin' sad. Um, just depending on the storylines and things like that, um, I already have a pretty good idea of uh, what I'm going to do to some degree. Some of it will be new. I mean, I'll probably write some new things. I've been working on, there's a thing I was working on that, can I play you with yeah, you? Sure. Oh, so you're going to give us a, a preview. Yeah, this is kind of a pre. Now, okay, so no, okay, just play for part two, everybody. This is. This is a, so I write three different ways. I write with the ukulele, I come in and write it down. I write from my mind straight to music. In other words, I don't have a piano or a guitar. I just write it out into Sibelius, this program I use. And then the third way is sometimes I have part of an idea on a piano or the, or the ukulele or guitar. Then I write the rest out in Sibelius. So I write three different ways. Whereas when I was younger, you would just, guy, 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 guy. you yeah. write just with the guitar. But I find if you use these different ways, it pulls out different things out of your conscious, subconscious, and super conscious, you know? Like I was into that um, meditation, different things like that, and getting in touch with, uh, you know, like uh, infinity and that whole, we like when you meditate, you see the light. I used to do that a lot more. I, don't, I haven't done as much now, but I remember as a kid, I would always see this light. I'd go, what the, what is that? Am I crazy? <laughs> But it's like the the third eye. I would see that all the time as a kid. So to give, now, give us a, give us a taste of what you're thinking yeah. about for part two. So this is this thing. So this program Sibelius is really cool. The sounds are not as good as Pro Tools because you're using a mock-up of the sounds, Scott, just to get just to get the idea. It's like when you were doing a play and they have you walk to a line, right? Susan, the baby's on fire. Bobby, go, you know, you're not doing a hundred percent. But this is kind of different. This I don't know. This almost has a New York thing. And I all I also relate to the New York thing in your movie. Because I, you know, my family's from back east. So I get that back east, you know, where California was like, you know, hey man, have a nice day. <laughs> where the back where I came from, it's like, you know, you're gonna get a beat. Right, right. Oh, you're gonna get a beat. 
Let's see. This is kind of start sweet. And I was good. There'll be a violin over this probably. Oh yeah, I did put a violin. Oh, so I watch it keep growing. It's not just repeating the same thing. Yeah, you can already see where it fits in. It's in it. It. It's like, do you like it, Scott? All right. Oh my God, we're gonna get out of this. It's gonna be great. And no, no, <laughs> no, you're not. Well, oh, that's fabulous. Okay, like that. I can't wait. Sweet to... little little baby. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, well, awesome. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Vince Loria thank is you. the genius behind the original soundtrack of Skin on Skin, the rise and fall of the world's largest furrier. I'm Scott Hunter. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you again. Thank you.